screens. And this next book is for anyone who sat around with their aunties, sisters, or cousins and felt that magic that exists within those deep female bonds. Yeah. Family lore weaves together the stories of the Marte family women, centered around one of the main characters, Floor, who has the gift of predicting when someone will die. It's masterfully told by Elizabeth Acevedo, a National Poetry Slam champion winner of the prestigious National Book Award and the Young People's Poet Laureate of 2022. And oh yeah, a New York Times bestselling author. <laughs> Welcome to the TAM fam, Elizabeth Acevedo! Welcome to the Let's Get Lit Club. Yes. But you're on everybody's tongue. Everybody's talking about you. I want to read what Time Magazine said about your book. Acevedo's treatment of magic as an everyday possibility is compelling, but there's also magic in the wonder, surprise, frustrations, and joys these characters experience in their relationships with one another. Like the characters, you are of Dominican descent. Mm -hmm. And the idea of the story came 10 years before you wrote it, when you visited your aunt in the Bronx, your yes. aunt's house in the Bronx. Yes. B-X, B-X, hey. there you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're in New York, so I could say that. <laughs> um, so you're in the Bronx with your aunt. Yeah. And the inspiration comes. You know, I, my mom is one of 15, one of nine oh. sisters. It's a big family. And this particular tia, Tia Margarita, is just like, She's one of those women that doesn't play, doesn't have, you know. We I can play. already picture her. Yeah, she yeah. is just fierce. She's fierce and she, she was fierce in the Dominican Republic. She came here, she hustled her way, she's fierce here. And I just remember that moment when I left her house and I was like, she's the main character of mm. the book. Like she's who we need to be writing about. In the book, you explore these relationships, but also the weight of secrecy. Yeah. You ask uh, this question as a part of an article in USA Today. You said, how do we collect our stories when we come from women who keep a lot to themselves and don't say what's happening to them? That shook me. Yeah. It's true. I think we, you know, some of us come from cultures where to forbear, mm -hmm. to be stoic in the face of pain or shame is a point of pride. But that silence, I think, eats away at us and it, it's inherited over and over, right? And so there are secrets my mother had that I'm like, if you had told me that, oh, wow. it may have made my life easier, right? right? I would have known how to process certain things I didn't know how to process. And so the book is really thinking about how we inherit silence yeah. and how we can challenge it. You see me tearing up over here, because <laughs> that's real. That's real, and how we can challenge it and break it. Right, because we have to make it easier for the next generation to talk. You've written poetry and young adult. Mm -hmm. This is your first book for adults. Yes. What was that storytelling process like? We were talking with Chloe Gong about her now evolving into that space. Yeah. What was it like for you? Because you were pregnant when you were writing, right? I was So pregnant that's real adult. Writing. Yeah, because you're getting ready to guide somebody else, right? It was, and yeah. this is a book about mothers and their children, and so that was a part of it. But I'm not gonna lie to you, Tamron, I was looking for like to flex a little bit, right? <laughs> and so I think this adult book let me be really expansive in yeah. terms of language, in terms of the big questions I wanted to ask. Not that my young adult books don't do that, but I hold young people yeah. tenderly in a way that I think I was unflinchingly honest with this book and the things I was asking. Speaking of that unflinching honesty, um, you went back to work five months after you gave birth. Yeah. And you wrote something on Instagram that I think will speak to so many parents. You said, it felt good to be back in the thick of my artistic life, but wow, not having my kid around is visceral ache. I kept checking my pockets, my backpack. I walked back to my guest room twice. Sure, I'd left a necessity behind. I'm forgetting something, I repeated to the event escorts, but it was someone that I was missing. Yeah. It's, you know, I thought I was gonna be one of those moms that's just like out here, like yeah. I'm in the world. I thought so I, too, and I, then suddenly right? you're like, I just wanna be home with my baby. It, listen, I got on the train yesterday to come down and I'm like, I really gotta go, I gotta go. <laughs> I know. Like, we could Zoom, right? <laughs> Tyler will understand. <laughs> because it's just, it's so hard to yeah. leave him and they, you know, 
he's growing so quick. Yeah. I left for a tour and came yeah. back, a little tooth was peeking out, and he's oh. pulling himself up, and I'm like, ah. Oh. So it's, how do you love the career you have and the purpose you have there, and that the fact that it pulls you away from this little human you also mm -hmm. love, and, and the balance. Okay, you got me crying uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, all the praise, whether it's from the Time Magazine articles and the awards to the fans on Book Talk and everywhere, it is deserved and real. And I'm happy you got on the train today to come yes. and see me. Now go back home to your I baby. <laughs> Thank you. Family Roar is out now. And guess what? Can you dream? Can you feel the magic? Because you're all Beautiful story. Thank you so much, my it's darling. Oh, it's an honor. It is a true honor. It's a blessing.